Uh, just a late night, bored, sitting back, want to ramble. Um, let's talk about some bikes, man. As I've mentioned in other videos, I've owned ZX6, SRAD 750s, uh, ZX12, R1s, CBR 1000. Right now, I'm on a 2011 R1. Uh, just got off a 08 CBR 1000, which is hands down the best bike. Um, for for handling that I've ridden, the the top end isn't all there uh, for other leader bikes that you get. But man, that mid range hits. Um, the problem with the R1, not the R1, but the uh, CBR 1000 is the 2008 models have a a crank issue where the primary gear and the uh, clutch basket doesn't mesh well. And it creates some whine, which it wasn't causing any mechanical problems. But I, I, I like my bikes to be perfect. I like my cars to be perfect. And I just couldn't get with that whine, knowing that I knew what it was. So if you get a 2008 R1, uh, the way to check to see if it went through the recall with the new crankshaft is on the uh, the... The clutch actuator, where the crankcase is, it should be a little dimple or a punch mark made. Therefore, if you get an R8, uh, 08 CBR or anything before 2011 or 12, look for that punch mark. Because I don't believe they fixed that issue to 11 or 2012. Uh, it's a common issue. Or just stay away from the newer CBRs unless it's a 13, 14. But from my understanding, it's usually 2008s and 9s. But uh, that was a fun bike. Fun bike, turned amazing. Slow speed, high speed, felt like a 600. Versus this R1 where it's all bulbous and feels like you're on a Hayabusa or Sport Tour. If it didn't have such an aggressive rake, uh, I would I would classify it as a, as a sport tour, but it's also missing a gas gauge. You know, I I like the, the the new electronics they're putting on these bikes, but I don't need to know my miles per gallon. I need to know how much gas is in the tank. Okay, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, give us gas gauges. I understand these are all out race bikes in the the uh, the uh, world superbike or whatever like that, but Damn, give us a gas gauge. I'm pretty sure those guys don't care about their miles per gallon. The crew chief is, is calculating all that crap for them. So give us a, a gas gauge, please. Y'all all please. Um, I had a mild stretch on this bike. I'm not a fan of stretch bikes. Um, it feels like an 18-wheeler going through the turn. Um, it's not... It's not pushing or anything. It's just you can feel the trail of the back tire behind the, the bike. And it's definitely lagging a little bit. So in the next couple of weeks, I will be ordering the, the little blocks to put it back to normal. Uh, also, will be ordering some some new levers. You know, Give me a, a, a comment or whatever. Let me know what type of levers I should get. Um, you know, right now, I'm just looking at some Amazon crap. Or I might just get some Amazon levers and do a review on it. Let me know. Uh, I put the cam chain tensioner on this bike. Uh, a lot of a lot of these newer R1s have a, a, a hydraulic cam chain tensioner, which is means it runs by oil. And the top of the engine is the last thing to get oil on these bikes. Therefore, when you crank them up cold, they, they tend to lack pressure and creates a, a clicking sound, which can cause you to jump timing or score gear, anything like that. So if you have a, a 2009, 10 or 12 R1, I suggest you to get a manual cam chain tensioner because eventually your, your, your tensioner is going to fail. Um, that ZX6 I had, man, I love that bike. It was a... 95 or something like that. It was a sweet little bike. It had a little stinger exhaust on it. It sounded like a little bee buzzing down the road. 
but it, it's, it's labeled as a sport tour. I love that bike. And then I up, upgraded to the S-Rad 750. I love the S-Rad. It went through turns like butter. Crunk up every time I wanted to. Never overheated. Got tired of that, sold it. And then um, end up with the, I believe I got the R1 after that, 04 R1. Lovely bike. I mean, turned in like a jewel. Felt like I was riding on a magic carpet. Really did. Uh, only problem with that bike, second gear was out. Whoever got it for me was willing or whatever without clutching or or whatever they were doing. Second gear was, was toast. Um, I would look for that if I was going to get an a older R1. Second gear is horrendous on those bikes. But that was a fun, fun bike mid-range, low-range, and high-range. Um, that ZX-12 stretched and lowered. I wish I still had pics and videos of it. Um, it, it, was, it was a beast. It was ZX-12 unrestricted. I ended up going like about 215 on it one day. Uh, chrome wheels stretched and lowered, like I said. Uh, it just ran like a beast. Scalded dog. Didn't care. Uh, but it was, it was the way when it was lowered, it felt like felt like I was on a cruiser or something. Like, these bikes weren't meant to be lowered. They need to be high in the back. When you lower a bike, you mess up the geometry and going through the turns. It's just a, a pain in the ass. But, man, that ZX-12 was running. Unfortunately, it got wrecked. Um, that CBR, back to that, I would own a newer CBR because... To me, that that they're the lightest, the lightest feeling bike when you're sitting on the, the cockpit. But I can't afford twenty thousand to get that new SP. So, <laughs> hopefully, you YouTubers can help me out on that. But they're they're nice bikes, man. And that my next bike will probably be uh, a Hayabusa Turbo. I'm probably build that myself if I do. Um, it's a pretty simple process probably make a couple videos if I side, but I will be making more videos. Tell me what you want to want to know. You know, I, I'll make any video y'all want. I'll let you know about the R1. We can talk. I guess I got the twin turbo Camaro sitting in the garage over there. Just, just let me know what's going on, guys. Appreciate it.